Uh, salams, welcome to uh, News Click. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but we have uh, finally halfway through the tournament woken up uh, a little bit and and managed to get hold of. Uh, I think one of my favorite voices when it comes to uh, covering cricket, as far as cricket journalism is concerned. Uh, I must admit, this is not a sport that I'm uh, that familiar with, uh, which is, makes it all the more valuable to have with us on this uh, special episode, Sharda Ogra, uh, who's been covering Cricket World Cups since 1996. <laughs> um, and covering cricket before that, uh, but it, it takes a while. Uh, you have to you have to pay your dues at uh, local grounds, Sharda, uh, and, and things like that before you get a chance to uh, cover a World Cup. But a lot has changed since uh, 1996, of course, as far as uh, world cricket is concerned. In a sense, maybe that was a starting point of India's kind of uh, ascendancy. Uh, Sharda. Uh, Bring us, uh, give us an update first. What's happening? We're halfway through the tournament, and I'm pretty sure uh, that being a largely Indian audience, people are uh, following the World Cup quite closely. Uh, but but you're looking at it obviously from a from a different perspective, having covered so many of these events in the past. Your approach is probably a little more nuanced uh, than than most of us who watch as just pure fans. Uh, so what's been the most interesting? A uh, few points for you at this halfway stage of the ICC Men's World Cup 2023. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Dan, for having me here. Uh, the World Cup, as it's on, uh, you know, on television, it's a fantastic, slick product. You can see it, great music and soundtrack and stuff. And India is doing very well. Uh, they've won five of their five matches. Everyone plays nine, so they are, they're past that, uh, they're past that sort of uh, the, the halfway stage. All, all most teams to do need to do is win about six matches. So India is looking good to make the semi-final. This is quite a brutal format in the sense that all teams play everybody. Uh, so ten teams in nine matches for each of them, and you and you're through. Yeah, the top four are through to the semi-finals, and it's uh, and it's on from there. Then it's knockouts. Um, India's performance has been terrific. There have been a lot of dramatic upsets in the tournament. You've had um, uh, Netherlands scoring a victory over uh, South Africa. You have Afghanistan beating both England um, and uh, Pakistan. Um, mm. England has, has stumbled. England has uh, won only one of its five matches. Uh, it's lost to Australia, lost to Sri Lanka, lost to Sri Lanka yesterday here in Bangalore. Uh, like I said, lost to uh, uh, Afghanistan uh, as well, and they've only beaten uh, Bangladesh. And uh, so that's and, and England are defending champions. England were sort of carriers of the flame of this bold new way of playing uh, Test cricket and One Day cricket. They were they are in fact white ball champions in uh, in both the two formats, 2020 and 50 over cricket. And there is massive shock, I assume, running through English cricket at the moment, given the fact that their, their team has had a fairly uh, bad performance. Um, what the tournament seems to be missing, but what always tends to happen in World Cup in, in 50 overs particularly, is that everyone's waiting for the close game. You know, everyone's waiting for that last over or last ball finish. And that's not happened till now. Um, maybe when we're going through where, where things matter, there are about four teams now pushing for that fourth spot. So in the top three places, you've got India, you've got New Zealand, you've got South Africa, very fairly secure. They look like they're going to get, get through the semis, no issues. The fourth, the fourth spot is is uh, Australia is basically battling for fourth place, which should surprise everyone because they are five times champion. Um, Australia, uh, Sri Lanka. Um, I'm. Uh, I, I, this is what happens is after sometimes I get uh, Pakistan as well, who've had a bad tournament, and Afghanistan. Afghanistan are, yeah. are in the are in the running for uh, for a place in the semi final. I mean, it'll have to be absolutely mental if if they make it. But that's the stage uh, that we're at now. There have been some terrific. Um, uh, century scored, but the games have largely been very one-sided. It, it, mm. Either this way or that, you know. There's uh, games get over by eight o'clock when <laughs> everyone's wondering what to do with the rest of the evening when games finish when when day night games finish by eight pm, which is mm. what has happened even with the strongest of uh, sort of teams that are that are battling together. So uh, because you know, I, I think T20 uh, uh, 20 over format has kind of taken over uh, pretty much. What sort of impact has that had on, let's say, England's performance, uh, Sharda? They, 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 like, like you said, it was supposed to be a revolutionary new way of playing, uh, you know, all formats of the game that, that uh, in a way stems from uh, the fastest or the shortest format of the game. 
how much of an impact has has it had on on how some of these teams are performing uh, because when i look at like a team like afghanistan play i feel like uh, their exposure to uh, playing some of the best players whether it's through the ipl or other t20 games has uh, led them up to this stage where they are now competing with some of the best teams in the world and that's definitely you know a sign of some improvement uh, or, or or some growth uh, as far as the broader context of cricket is concerned uh, but for teams like england australia who play so much cricket day in day out maybe 300 days of cricket in a year uh, what kind of impact does that have on a team uh, when when you go in and and when you go into a tournament like this that lasts for you know 300 odd weeks uh, <laughs> does it, <laughs> does that also kind of play into it is it hard to kind of switch on and be on for all these nine games that are so spread out i mean uh, you would think that uh, switching on at a world cup would be absolutely necessary if you watch the indians who actually play more cricket days of cricket than any other country um you know because they they'll tell you with long doleful expressions that you see because when we go and play in the smaller countries it helps them so the boards always sending us and we are playing so much cricket etc etc um you would have to get ready for this format in the sense you would be able to uh, work balance out how your players are playing what their workload is um, the most interesting part is not that uh, everyone thought that the younger players coming into this tournament would actually struggle with uh, with the longevity of 50 over cricket yeah. you know bowler has to bowl 10 overs a batsman has to bat uh, 50 overs whatever it is but england's performance yesterday was completely baffling because they are full of very experienced players and i was watching the game as uh, even though they were eight down or seven down all they had to do to try and push their score up from 150 uh, 47 or 157 whatever that was towards say 175 250 giving them some chance just yeah. get back to the score run a ball but they yeah. didn't seem to <laughs> understand that and the commentators were just baffled as said why do they have to try and hit a six every ball you're in deep mm. trouble here. by comparison the sri lankans came in and said let's play this like a 20 to 20 game and finish it you know there's no pressure we've got to get this over with and and, and two young batsmen um samara vikrama and nisanka who just came in and took control of the of the chase that there was and so it's quite interesting because england have really got into this sort of slump and they've stayed in that space Um, mm. Afghanistan's revival has been uh, fantastic because this has become a tournament of the top orders. If the top orders are able to get going, and then back you through to about thirty, forty overs, then you are able to get the kind of a score that your bowlers can defend. Uh, if you, if the top order is not, then everyone has this sort of identity crisis. Like, okay, what do we do now? What do we, what do we do within fifteen and 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 forty overs? You know, mm. how do we drag this game out? Because it's literally the reverse of 2020 there's no dragging out anything in 2020 it's it, it's absolute get up and go and run um hmm. so it's very interesting how teams have responded uh, uh, differently but i think if you are able to get a good push at the top a sort of a secure base on which to build again contradiction in terms here because in- england did very well for the first five or six overs there were no wickets down for for, for a good amount of runs and hmm. then they got fell into this hole Uh, so it's been a good World Cup to see. Uh, it's why this format is uh, is is seen as sort of the halfway house between the long the long version of the red ball version of game test cricket and 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 twenty overs because it demands a different set of skills here. And you're seeing people try to again adjust to it, not just in uh, not just young players, but you can see the experienced England team doing it um, as well. They said England said you know there's the air has been bad, the outfield's been bad. All of it is true, but then they played in Bangalore. Where all conditions were fine, and they still had an absolutely wretched game. A- any sense from what you've seen about the kind of viewership the tournament is getting? How how are we doing on on that front? Uh, I-, I was saying because it's been interesting for me to watch. Uh, you know th- that some of those periods that you were mentioning between, let's say, twenty five and thirty five, forty uh, overs, when when uh, the mind games are are happening, and you know. Uh, I, I I really enjoyed watching uh, Afghanistan play their four spinners and, and to see how that goes because there was a time when you, in South Asia uh, particularly uh, spinners sort of had a major role to play uh, in how games went and that seems to have changed quite dramatically uh, in the past few years uh, teams like India also uh, you know India Pakistan Sri Lanka uh, not favoring spin uh, as much anymore Is that I, even an accurate observation? Uh, I don't know. 
it's sort of there or thereabouts. <laughs> but what's happening is that that a lot of these teams, particularly if you, if you have to compete very well overseas, you need good uh, pace bowling to to take with you know seam bowling, swing bowling. You need something. You need quality to take you, and then you can get your spinners to step in. In India, particularly, mm. a big push to getting your fast bowlers uh, working. Uh, you know, your fast bowling unit. Uh, to uh, up to scratch when you went abroad, and we've seen the results. They've been they've been uh, terrific. In the, the one-day game, uh, what we're seeing now is that there's some element of spin that's coming into it. Uh, like mm. Afghanistan are playing four spinners. South Africa is also playing spinners. They'll play Keshav Maharaj and they'll play Tabrez Shamsi, and they'll they'll try and get someone to bowl a few hours of spin if they need to. If they see that it'll help them. The other thing yeah. about this World Cup is it's not like it's a World Cup where uh, it, over a large geographical landmass as well. So the the, the conditions change. Uh, from north to south, east to west, in terms of uh, what, uh, how, how the weather plays its part, how, what the wickets play like. So teams are having to adjust constantly as as they go along. There's no formula. Um, so you do have the, uh, the the sort of spinners coming into it in this in this middle portion, and the middle portion then becomes the point at which you can either completely smash the spinners out of the game or as mm -hmm. a bowling team can take over at that point. Your spinners come in like the Indians do and choke the batting and get and, and, and get the wickets. Um, the response to it, like you said, what's been the response? I think I have to tell you that I was watching the India-Pakistan match on television and it was 3.5 crore whatever on Hotstar or whatever, which is a big number and not surprising, but it was not an even game. It was not even a contest, uh, so to speak. What's yeah. been disappointing has been the to see no crowds in the stadium uh, in non-India games, even sometimes in India games, uh, not enough crowds, like not like standing room crowds only. And that I don't think has so much to do on uh, uh, the, the public not being interested. Uh, it has to do on the fact that the tickets are not easily available. It's a massive scramble to still get tickets. You know, it's it's wretched how, how uh, that has been organized. That has been, we should be surprised. It's not a new thing. But um, it could have been done much better because it is a it's it's a world tournament. You need to have more fans from overseas coming, but there's been no interest in that whatsoever at yeah. the top level. Yeah. You're seeing you're seeing empty stands, and then in the evening after the sun goes down, it tends to fill up, which is nice, which is good. But why would a broadcaster want to see empty stands at the at, at the back of the thing? I mean, people in Bangalore were really interested in watching uh, you know the, the games we had here. We had mm. Australia versus Pakistan, and we had uh, and and the crowd was pretty good. It was like 75, 80 percent full. But still, empty stands at the beginning. The tickets have been have been a mess, and uh, it's almost like an insult to the fans who do want to turn up. We we'll we'll get, come back to this, uh, circle back to it in a bit, Shada, when we talk about actually the format and fifty over cricket and whether people have you know midweek uh, the time to take eight hours off a work day and and come and watch a game of cricket uh, that sort of luxury uh, because I mean we're on it's it's a Friday today when we're recording this show. Uh, I think when Australia Pakistan was happening, it was a Monday, uh, so uh, not that easy for people to also turn up, uh, you know, and spend the entire day. Uh, and now we are being told uh, young people should work seventy hours uh, a week yeah. too. <laughs> oh, is it? I, I thought I thought in India we are still going for one hundred and twenty as a uh, minimum. <laughs> yeah. 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 While the while the world uh, what is moving towards thirty hours and and three days, you know, and all of that. Uh, so, just just a, a little bit more on India, Sharda, because they've looked pretty unbeatable, uh, this squad. And I think uh, listening to a couple of podcasts, uh, you know, a couple of guys based in Australia and, and all of that, uh, trying to figure out how to beat this Indian team. Have you figured out what can beat this Indian team except this Indian team itself? I mean, the Indian team have looked formidable and impressive. And for people of my generation, we start to panic when that happens, you know, because you're, see, you're seeing like the bad days coming somewhere, which could be absolute rubbish. So India have not batted first. They've always chased at every at, 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 in every match that they've played, either voluntarily or or they've been they've been uh, asked to chase by teams. Asked like, to. Um, mm. And uh, what happens when their top order gets into a bit of trouble? We need to see that. So everyone's saying. You know, we found a we found a finisher in Shreya Sayer and we found a finisher in uh, um, uh, Sayer and KL Rahul. But mm. you have to see what happens if they don't have a really sterling sort of strong performer like Sharma, Rohit Sharma, or Virat Kohli at the other end with them. You know, that's a that's a thing. Uh, in the Australia match that they played, <laughs> the first match that they played, uh, they were two for three, and then Virat was dropped by Mitchell Marsh. And then we mm. saw in the, in the match here uh, that uh, where Pakistan was playing Australia, David Warner was dropped, and he went then went on to produce that massive uh, score, of, um, crazy crazy numbers over there. So that's the kind of thing that in the if the top order wobbles, what happens? That's the that, India have not been tested in that way. That's the that's the mm. one way 
I think teams can uh, can look at it. But then absolutely, we have, have to be on top of their game. Uh, the injury to Hardik Pandya is going to make a bit of a difference when it comes to these crunch situations. Because are you then going to... Uh, you get to play an extra bowler if Pandya is playing. You can you can play an extra spinner if you want. And, but Pandya is injured now, and so the balance of the team goes a bit off. But they are very well, uh, very well grooved in that sense. They're looking very good. They're not looking under pressure at all, and they've been able to perform superbly. The the matches that are they have also helped. The sequence of matches that they played have also made a difference. It's been it's been fine. But they're the host team. They're entitled to. Uh, to get a few, uh, to have a few advantages in, in some case, the venues where they play as well. So mm. it's been very good, but there, but a knockout match is a knockout match, and then you have to have teams that will take, that will grab the uh, opportunity. And and if you're going under the radar and everyone's paying attention on India, you have to be there when the chance comes. Fair enough. Uh, uh, just on that fourth place uh, point that you mentioned uh, in the beginning. Uh, I think a lot of uh, young people these days follow the English Premier League and and uh, the way things have been over the past few years, it's always been it's Manchester City wins the league and then everyone else is fighting to be in the top four. Uh, you know, so you get to play Champions League and all of that. And very similar in this format when it comes to the World Cup because the four teams go straight to the semis. Uh, and that fourth place is looking uh, to be in the sort of interesting uh, battle, as it were. Yeah. And uh, I think three of the South Asian teams are very much in, in it for that last spot for the semis. Uh, how do you see that developing? And if you can uh, just focus a bit on Afghanistan in that, uh, you know, how, how they've, they have they seem to have come a long way uh, f from, uh, I guess, in the last five, seven years. I mean, it's, a, it's going to be a massive scrap for that last, uh, for those last place. Uh, Australia, though, are looking the strongest because they are what they call a big tournament team. You know, when the time mm -hmm. comes, what happens at the beginning, they turn up. They've got, they, they've got the talent, they've got the players, and they have the experience to uh, sort of uh, uh, catch it. But what would be fantastic if there were some really crazy upsets which have been there. So let's hope this format just keeps offering them. Uh, because Pakistan depend on too many other combinations and permutations for them to go through. Uh, Sri Lanka are just sort of gathering their breath. Afghanistan is like this X-factor team that now is seeming very, very dangerous and are able to... Their, their four-spinner thing is something that just looks perfect in these situations and in these surroundings. And they would have gathered a lot of confidence uh, by the fact that they've had two big wins inside 10 days. You know, it's, it, it's not something that they'll say that, look, uh, the gap is not that big, and we can get to these. We we can get to uh, we can get past these guys, whoever uh, whoever it is. Uh, the Afghanistan story has been uh, dramatic, big uh, and seen as cricket's big success story over the last say two three World Cups almost. They mm. didn't play twenty. Uh, they were not here in 2011, 2015, and twenty seventeen, and they've played in a lot of T twenty World Cups. So they're there or thereabouts. They've always been knocking at the door. We've always wondered about their batting because their bowling has always been strong. But you saw Gurbaz play a fantastic innings, their opener wicket keeper. Um, so it's almost like they'll get much more confidence, and they're supremely fit athletes as well. Uh, the, the interesting part is that India has offered them Greater Noida as their home venue if they want to play their matches there, and that's been that's that's helped them a lot because there's no place, no way they can play anywhere in um, in Afghanistan and you know host host teams there. So, so Greater Noida is seen as their as their uh, home ground. Uh, mm -hmm. In that sense, their cricketers play in 2020 franchises. They're coming through the, you know, they come through. There's a big, big surge in interest. World. And even since the Taliban have taken over, they've realized that we better not touch men's cricket. You know, we better not go there because they are literally the single source of sporting pride for the uh, for the country. And all of them know it. And I think their global superstar is Rashid Khan. Um, he's not leading at the moment, but he's certainly very, very influential. And you can see, and he knows. Indian ground like the back of his hand. Yeah. Uh, extremely capable performer and, and a great uh, sort of a example to, to, to lead the team forward. You know, he's uh, confident, he's English speaking, so that helps, he's successful, he's got, he's accepted by the world of cricket and all his teammates sort of rally behind him. So they are, they're always a great, uh, you know, story of happiness. I think it, it, the Bangladesh will be very upset they've not been able to play uh, in terms of what their fans want. They are just sort of below that, but England and Netherlands are then follow behind, which is which is uh, uh, <laughs> England would never have thought that they'd be in that spot. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. I think that 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 kind of uh, wraps up uh, most of what we wanted to talk about as far as things are concerned. Uh, 
on the field but but there's also plenty of conversation and because again this is such a spaced out tournament i guess it allows for those conversations to develop uh, one of the things that people tell me cricketing in cricketing circles is being talked about is uh, whether it's one one format of the same sport too many uh, and 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 the future of uh, 50 over cricket uh, itself being a bit of a question mark how do you see that uh, developing sharda because also now this is going to be a, a, an olympic sport at least for los angeles 2028 uh, and then we'll see how it goes after that but but that will be t20 as well um, so definitely t20 is here to stay and there's a strong lobby for test cricket uh, you know uh, to be revived and then and, and it's happening in, in a way with the test championship and, and things like that uh, so where does that leave uh, the 50 over format is it untenable increasingly uh, that's what the discussion apparently is going to be uh, they in november early november there's going to be a meeting of all the uh, there's going to be a what is the what is the word uh, uh, mardarshak mandals of cricket a mandal of cricket will gather and uh, to decide what is to be done about the format i think it does depend on what india's performance ends up like if the indians win uh, you don't know how this could be marketed. What is certainly going to happen, which I, I mean, I, I, I think it is, is that they're going to have to reformat how bilateral one-day tournaments, 50-over tournaments are played, because you can see, because eventually the World Cup is still the World Cup that every team wants to win. It's not the 20-over World Cup which is played once every two years. It's like it's mm. like this, you know. How can it be a World Cup if it's come so soon? So, um, so the once in four-year tournament is the one they want to win, but it's been played in the wrong format and. As in wrong in, in uh, air quotes uh, format. Uh, so, but you can't just leave it hanging there in the middle of nothing and have nobody playing anything until uh, and, and just have it pop up every four years. It makes no sense. It, there's no context to it at all. So, I think mm. maybe rejigging how that is played will be uh, will, will be done. I mean, I, uh, Sachin Dolkar has always talked about breaking this up into. Uh, 25 overs from one team, 25 overs from the next team, and then you go 25, 25 again. That's his. That's been his idea. He's happy to talk about it. Anyone calls him up, he'll talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. Or if you're going to change the competition structure around it, you know that have clumps of uh, these multi-nation uh, tournaments in the middle. But where do you fit this into a calendar which is now getting increasingly packed with 2020 franchise leagues, which are which is the which is which is the money bucket, you know? So um, the Olympics is an interesting. A thing because they've waited a long time for it, and because major league soccer, major league sorry, major league cricket has started in the United States this year, that's going to be seen as the driver of attention, interest, engine, revenue, ads, whatever you know, eyeballs, whatever, uh, to to make sure that the the, the format stays uh, uh, stays in the Olympic Games because it means money to smaller countries in, in a large way. Uh, a lot of other countries. I mean, women's uh, Thailand plays women's cricket. Papua New Guinea plays plays men's cricket. Uh, 2020 as well. So. For them, it, it it means something to be uh, uh, at the Olympics. Um, only six teams are going to play in the first uh, in the first Los Angeles Games uh, uh, cricket competition um, after 128 years. I think it's when it happened after 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1900 yeah. was uh, played yeah. in 1900, and they played it again in 1928. And it's always been about the format. That like who's going to have a Test match? <laughs> How do people spend time watching? Five days of a test match is like one third of the Olympics gone. How are you going to have a test match Olympic? Not happening. So similarly with uh, with uh, 50 over cricket, when it came, when it was born in the 70s, it was still not seen as sort of short, sharp, and 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 uh, uh, viable to play. But mm. the 20 over format seems to be the answer. Uh, one day cricket's fortunes are really uh, in a space at this moment where. Um, it's like halfway house. You don't know. You want to win a World Cup, but if you don't want to play the format at all, and it's and it's an interesting format because of the fact that it it changes the mindsets of people that play 2020 that are saying, okay, now what? You know, we don't want to play mm. Test cricket. It's too it's too tiresome. But now, if you want to win a World Cup, you want to be World Champions. But what about this? Um, the Test cricket lobby is getting smaller and smaller. Uh, it's actually, you know, uh, can you imagine only four countries playing each other in the World Cup or it's just too boring? You know, like, and everyone keeps pointing out to rugby and saying rugby's World Cup is getting bigger. They've got 20 teams and you're still stuck yeah. at, tw at 10, you know, you're, you're making it smaller. So there are all these questions that are happening. I want to see what, what the discussion, what they come up with. One of my favorite pet sayings, like I say, I'm quoting myself, is that cricket, and when I say cricket, I mean establishment, the establishment. Cricket protects what it wants to protect. 
if cricket wants to protect uh, the 50 over format, they will find a way to protect it. If it doesn't, they'll find thousands of excuses to get rid of it, of, of rid of bilateral cricket. And, you know, they come up with something. It's just simple, easy. Ask any consultant type of company and they'll tell you why why you should play it and why you shouldn't play it. It'll, it'll, be, done, it'll be done like that. Fair enough. Fair enough. And, and when, when I guess when the management consultants come, it's uh, the cost cuttings. <laughs> Uh, that happened first, and then, yeah, yeah. So, so in the fire sale, maybe uh, one day cricket will be lost, but we will have cricket at the Olympic Games, and that's something to look forward to, Shada. In a sense, uh, also because you were mentioning how uh, the money will stay within uh, that sort of um, realm, I guess, which means that uh, the BCCI and and Indian cricket doesn't have so much of a say uh, on it. Uh, how how will um, and when we say the cricket establishment these days, it's pretty much the Indian cricket establishment. Uh, so so how how do you see them responding? Uh, because it's been at the Asian Games for some time now, and and we don't see the top squad going. Uh, at least the men's team. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The women's game is a bit different, but as far as the men's cricket is concerned, uh, so with these new sort of franchises or franchise leagues emerging like in, in the US, which are likely to be, again, huge money spinners. Uh, is the sort of power center likely to devolve a bit? Is it likely to become a bit more decentralized and more uh, inclusive? Or, uh, you know, we, will the BCCI at some point say, okay, this is where we draw the line and, and up to that, you can do whatever you want and then but the, that's enough. Yeah. Uh, that's that's an interesting question because uh, along with the major league cricket, the Saudis are interested in setting up uh, in setting up a twenty twenty franchise. Surprise! Company. Surprise! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they don't want to get on the wrong side of the BCCI like they did in like what happened in golf. They don't want that to happen. So that's another sort of uh, segue. I mean, a side sort of topic of that. Yeah, I think yeah. where the uh, where the where cricket will have to be uh, will have to understand. Uh, the officials of cricket, the rulers, the governors will have to understand is that the IOC is not like any other sporting organization that that, that cricket, the IOC is not the ICC, you know, which no. is currently just an event managing company and their rules are pretty strict. So things like uh, if you have to have it, 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 in terms of um, equal participation of women, in terms of uh, drug codes, in terms of uh, who's coming, who's not coming, they are, I mean, uh, they're good. It's a fairly absolutely watertight sort of set of conditions that are there. You cannot mess with those. And if you mess with those, mm. then you stay out of the mix. That's, that's, what, uh, that's what the deal is. Um, it, I mean, I was just thinking right now as you're talking about this horrifying scenario where BCCI said we don't want cricket to be in the Olympics and it falls off the map, which is because it, it doesn't, uh, a sense of self importance uh, will get corroded slightly, therefore. But this is just my wild imagination. Pay no attention to it. Um, mm. So I think that will be a good interchange that will be there. And I mean, I think if, and the players, cricketers are just dying to be a part of the Olympic Games. For them, it is absolutely. So when you talk to cricketers about anything, they say, ha ha, cricket to hell, but that is an Olympic sport. You know, Olympics mein kiya usne Neera Chopra mein. Like that's like the conversation that you have. Uh, so cricketers would just give an arm and a leg to be in that parade, in the games village, in all of that. Uh, so the Asian Games is one thing. But mm. uh, Olympics is the Olympics, most you know. This is like the biggest sporting competition. Everybody is there, um, and and uh, but, but since when have players had a say in anything that happens in Indian cricket? Ha ha. So that's what the, <laughs> that's what the scenario is going to be like. Um, I think it 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 will work because uh, the 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 enthusiasm for smaller nations to be a part of 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 this to be a part of a slightly larger competition to maybe push for more. Uh, it should come from, say, countries like England and Australia um, that have some clout in, in, in world cricket. I mean, I, I I think the ICC's imagination is currently bust. Uh, they're just trying to get through with this World Cup, however they can. Yeah. And uh, so it'll have, to come, it'll have to come from there. I mean, if cricket stepped off the Olympics, it'll be a failure of the governors of cricket as, as they are at this moment. And it would be a loss to, a, to actually globalizing your game, which is what you talk about, but you don't, yeah. you know, you don't put, put the money where the mouth is. You know. Mouth is. All right, we, we leave it there. Uh, thank you for watching. Please uh, share, subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel. Uh, share this video, of course. Uh, and write in to us. Uh, let us know what you think. Will the 50 over format uh, survive 
uh, in in all of the challenges that cricket is facing today and and the kind of money onslaught that t20 cricket is is bringing so essentially it's like uh, you know one format of the same sport sabotaging another so it's quite interesting i don't know how many sports in the world this is happening in uh, but uh, yeah so so that's it that's it for today uh, from all of us thank you very much goodbye